Hey Conscious Fam, welcome back to another incredible episode. If you're here listening, I appreciate you and I'm so grateful for you. On this episode, I share an amazing conscious conversation with my best friend and business partner and a guest that has been on the podcast before. So this is round two. It's been so long. I think it's been three years since she's been on and her name is Gregoria Chrysoteles. Gregoria, or G as everyone calls her, is a spiritual teacher and mindset coach. She's the co-owner and co-founder of The Conscious Collective with me, also the founder of Divination Amulets, and now an author. Her book's about to come out, and we talk about this on the podcast, as well as diving deep into our journey together as business partners, which is always a fun one to talk about, how we show up for our collective day in, day out, energetically showing up for your life and for your goals, being a 10 and feeling it. The law of attraction, we break this down into simple terms, being flexible and not rigid for success, being in the present moment, the path of least resistance, flow and intention in our lives, frequency levels, trusting your intuitive wisdom, G's upcoming book release and her book launch party, and our upcoming events for The Conscious Collective and so much more. You'll get to see our dynamic between each other, how we have fun, but we also know how to mix business and play together in a way that serves us and has been able to create everything you see today with The Conscious Collective. So there's so much more in there. Uh, This is a really fun conversation. I just love every conversation I have with her and we're always like, let's sit down and record this. And it's been three years since her first conversation on the podcast. Um, We'll be doing this more regularly, (laughs) but it's a great update and she's an incredible human that has so much value to offer this world. And I know you're going to get so much value out of this. So make sure you're taking notes and I hope you enjoy this episode. Welcome to The Conscious Pod. My name is Carlo Cirillo, and this is your place to cultivate wisdom, awareness, life insights to raise your being and become more conscious in your daily life. Before we kick off this amazing episode, I just want to share with you three amazing companies that are supporting the podcast, Conscious companies and brands that have partnered with me and the podcast to bring you guys everything that I do and they're supporting us in such a big way and offering so much incredible goodness to the world as well as an amazing offer for all of you listeners listening to The Conscious Podcast. So these are the three that I use and love and I'm just excited to share them with you because I know you're going to love them too. Number one is Vitable. Vitable is personalized vitamins sent to your door. You do the online quiz and based on your diet, lifestyle and goals, they tailor vitamins in a little packets to your needs. So you're only getting the things that you need. You don't have to go to the shop and try and pick all these things out and guess. Based on your quiz, they tailor the vitamins to you. This is incredible. They get sent to your door every month. They come in compostable packaging. It's just incredible. I've been using Vitable for the past four months and I love it. And they are offering you guys 50% off your first order. There's no lock-ins, none of that. All you have to do is go to www.vitable.com.au and then take the quiz, see what they recommend for you and try it for yourself and get 50% off with the code CARLO50, all in capitals, five, zero. Second, the product I'd love to share is Sacred Cacao. We have just recently partnered as a conscious collective with Sacred and they are incredible. Their cacao is delicious. We got to experience the ceremonial grade cacao at one of our online events. We hosted a cacao ceremony and it was amazing. I loved it and I've tried so many. This is definitely a delicious blend And they also come in five flavors, Earth, which is the original, Fire, which is chili cacao, Love, which is rose cacao, Vitality, which is matcha mint cacao, and then your ceremonial gray cacao. These are incredible. Definitely go check them out if you're a cacao fan or you're wanting to try this for yourself. And you're going to get 10% off 
your order with the code TCC in capitals 1010. Head to sacredtaste.com and try it out for yourself. And the final amazing brand that we are partnering with is Cleanse & Co. And if you haven't heard of Cleanse & Co before, this incredible company has so many amazing people involved and Haley, the owner, is just such a lovely human and they have crystals, they have mists, they have candles, they have so many incredible things that I have so much of their stuff in my bedroom. It's crazy. My room smells so good. I have the best and most amazing crystals in my room. Their range is incredible. I have never seen such an amazing range of crystals and candles online. For Christmas, I got everyone the candles that have crystals inside of them and the spray mist. I use it every day. I love it so much. If you haven't heard of them, they are massive in Australia and worldwide. And because I am a meditation teacher for them and on their Instagram, they are offering you guys 20% off your order with the code CARLO20. So head to www.cleanseandco.com.au to go get yourself some magical crystals or candles or whatever else is on their website. So if you want to check out any of these products, head to the show notes on whatever you're on or go to the link in my bio on Instagram, Carlo underscore Cirillo, and all the links will be there to try it out for yourself. (laughs) As always, we're starting (laughs) laughing. Every Facebook Live last night, everything we do, we're laughing. Uh, this guest doesn't need any intro. You've well, been on the podcast before. I we're have. best friends. We are. Co-founders of the Conscious Collective. It's it's the are amazing... Uh, yeah? <laughs> Did I say that right? Co-founders? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, yeah, it's, perfect. It's Gregoria. Hey. 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 That reminds back. me of your birthday thing. <laughs> hey. Insert clip. <laughs> Insert clip. This one. Um, (laughs) I'm very excited to be here. I feel like you took a while in between this chat and the last one, but it's because we're so busy and I get that. A lot of things to do, people to see. Um, Places to be. (laughs) Places to be. I get it. Kick back. It's that. Um, (laughs) This is going to be such an interesting dynamic because we are best friends. We're business partners. We talk every day. We... We muck around a lot yeah, and a, a lot our, lot. our voice notes are hilarious and that's why this is going to be a fun <laughs> conversation and a lot of you know us from either our events, um, you've seen us in the Conscious Collective, you've seen us posting together. Yeah. So the this is gonna be Yeah, it's, it's going to be a really good conversation because it has been a while. So if you want to know the itty gritty stuff about Gregoria's story, probably go back to that, but that was yeah. a long time ago. Like it was a long time ago. It two... Was. Well, that's, that's how probably longer now because that's where it all began. That's the conscious collective birth, essentially. Whoa. How we made it a whole company and, yeah. yeah. Okay. It was the birth, the genesis. How we met was... Yeah, Carlo, how? I got it wrong. I It was actually at World Vegan Day. Yeah. So, I had a stall, uh, plant-based box, former business, um, and Gregoria came up. Did you buy one? I know. I came up and like totally thrashed you. I was like, what is this oil? Nah. What is that? What is this? What's that product? This is, this is the 22-year-old Carlo going, I just started my first business. <laughs> I know. This lady's like asking, asking too many questions. Too many questions. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know it was 21 questions. Just buy the box. <laughs> Figure it out for yourself. Um, it wasn't a mystery box. You could see what, it, what was in it. And um, I think from there, we added each other on Instagram and then we went for coffee. We say it was kind of like a date, kind of see who we were, but we... we kind of knew we were like there's a age difference and yeah. we were just like we're friends like this that's it was very much so oh we're friends straight from the get-go yeah, yeah. It, it wasn't gonna lead down that path <laughs> and then from there i started the podcast probably not long after not long after at all. and then from there i was like oh well i want gregoria on there and then i guess that podcast allowed me to find out more about you mm. But it started a friendship where after that interview, we were just naturally drawn to each other and and we had a similar vision on what we wanted to do. Very similar. I was starting the community with the podcast and I was like, I want you to come on board. And that's a big thing. That's a massive compliment to you because for me to work with someone, I need to see goodness in them, value in them and someone that I actually want to work with. I've worked with people before and I've not liked it at all. Yeah. So... It was a risk and it's paid off. Absolutely. Like we're, it's, we're three years later and look what we've created. But Absolutely. I guess from there it went to 
what do we want to do? What do we want to create? And there's been so many ups and downs. So many. What did you see when we come together and created the collective? What what was your where were you at in your life? It's and what's question. progressed until now? Because that's it's been a, good question. a long time. I don't think time. we've even ever had that discussion. Um, because I too, similar to you, where I'm just like, I don't, I'm a solo kind of gal. Do you know what I mean? I, I have come from a business partnership and I was like, mm-hmm. I'm never doing that again. Although I love my ex-business partner. She's incredible. But it was like, I'm so ready to make decisions on my own. But mm-hmm. you and I just had the same vision, right? Yeah. We had the same vision of how we wanted to serve humanity and what we wanted to create in the world. And because of that, it was a very easy yes for me. And one thing that I haven't shared with you, it was actually an intuitive yes for me. It was like, oh my God, I just have to do this. I didn't even have to think about it. I was like, yeah, I'm in. And I didn't really know what that looked like at the beginning. It was like, Mm -hmm. oh, what did I just say yes to? But I was like, I'm in. I'm really in um, for this. And I feel that at that point in my time, although I had my own business established, it was more about like, well... I do see the potential of what we could create together as a community, right? And I think that that's something my business didn't have. I had an established business where I had a coaching business and all of those things, but I didn't necessarily have that attached to a community or creating this ripple effect out in the world. Because one thing that you and I have always talked about that's really important to us is that we have a business in which we serve all tiers, people who only want to connect with us like with our free events, those who also want to connect with us who like a a middle tier and those who want the VIP, very intensive kind of experience. And being able to create that and cultivate that together has been absolutely incredible. I also feel that our duo dynamic works really well. We very much so complement each other. Anyone who's ever been to any of our events or been in our energy, our presence, knows that we very much are so different, but we complement each other. Um, And I think that that's what makes it work. (laughs) You are forever calling me with 20,000 ideas. (laughs) Like my voice notes, sometimes I'm just like, oh my God, here's a 12 minute voice note. I already know that this is going to include 120 ideas. Uh, And then I... Get your pen and paper ready. Get my pen. But then what I do is like, which ones have I remembered at the end of that voice note? They're the only ones that are sticking, (laughs) right? So that's usually how it works. And I'm like, let's reel it in a little. Mm. Um, But we make it work. And the one thing that I love, again, about the company we've created is our willingness to do things that feel uncomfortable. And I think that that's why we're in this position now is because a lot of like we have, you know, gone down the trenches and not everything has worked in our favor. And yet we learned every single time. Why are you laughing? (laughs) Because there's so many things that people don't know about that (laughs) we've had to go through. Oh my God. And that's where we can open the the channel now to to talk about those things because it's been quite a journey. But there's lots in that where it's together, but... What's happened for you in that time? Okay. Because if people have listened to that, and a lot of people do because they've either seen you in the program, sure, sure. seen you at, at an event or anything like that, what has changed between that conversation that version and of now? G and Because you've flourished. You've, oh, you've grown so much. And, absolutely. Um, but can you not, right? Like yeah. I just see us all individually. Who I even was yesterday, that's no longer who I am today. I've outgrown her, right? <laughs> so when, when a friend sit, like hasn't seen me in a year, I'm like, you don't even know me anymore because I'm so beyond that, right? I've outgrown her. When it comes to my business, definitely a spiritual depth. Right, So all of a sudden now, like I've always been very connected. For those who don't know, I am a spiritual teacher. So I do this every single day. But I think, you know, the version that I was then had a spiritual shallowness to it. Still very incredible. But yep. now, like what I've learned in the last... Sorry. <laughs> what I've learned... Oh, I'm just knocking it out. <laughs> what I've learned in the last two years in regards to my spiritual awareness and self-awareness mm. is like... I. I actually cannot explain it. I think if you've been immersed in my content for a little while, you would have seen the progression, the natural progression. But when it comes to business alone, it has, it has progressed. I feel much more established. I feel much more grounded. I'm very much in my divine feminine. So I'm very fluid and spontaneous and I change my mind every day. But also creating those structures and those systems, stepping into the divine masculine, I think has served me when it comes to my business. So Yeah, I'm definitely in a very different position. Since then, I have these beautiful programs. I work with incredible clients. I change my mind every day. We (laughs) run a lot of events. I've published a book. Like, it's been a whole experience. Um, I've introduced a new program. Honestly, just, I reflect, it was funny, just before this, I spoke to Carla and I was like, I'm just so grateful for this life. And Mm. we said it because last night we were on a live and 
Like, we actually have fun. Yeah. If nothing else, if nothing else from this, in a decade, two decades, three decades time, we'll sit back and we'll be like, oh my God, we had fun. Yeah. We actually had fun. And that's the thing that I noticed with a lot of entrepreneurs is that they're really into the hustle energy yeah. and they say they're doing it to have fun, but they're not because they're literally fixed on the idea of the hustle, right? The mm. energy of the hustle. Of the chase. Uh, the chase, yeah. the productivity, the success, the money. For us, it's never been about that. Money's been the byproduct and yeah, cool, but it's always been about the fun. Like yeah. <laughs> we will do things where we're just <laughs> like, we will be putting from our pockets sometimes money because we're just like, eh, let it be fun. <laughs> let it be fun. But the memories and the excitement, and I think that yeah. we get to really experience life and I feel that that both mirrors in your business as well as mine. Like my yeah. business is fun. I have fun. I meet the best people. I have definitely established myself as a spiritual teacher. I know that a lot of people now reach out to me. Huge influencers reach out to me. And I know that it's because we have always played the long game, right? Yeah. It's never been a short-term thing, nor did I need the instant gratification. I didn't need to make it big or get famous real quick. I just stayed in my lane. I did my thing and I root for people too like I celebrate everyone and I know you do the same yeah. and I think that again that's that energy circulating around our fields and it's just allowed me to really thrive in this business so well, it's really does shown that, that yeah it does it does <laughs> um, and we're getting into so much depth in that because it's like we knew that if we did good good will always come back period not, not that it was like an expectation of okay I've done good now I'm waiting for it it was let's do let's do let's do let's add value 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 it will return Absolutely. and I think a lot of people, one, don't play the long game. Yes. We've, we've gotten to points where it was like, we could shut this down. Yeah. We've gotten to points where we've both had opportunities to leave this. We've yeah. had points where we weren't making money and we were like, why, are we, why do we keep doing this? We don't have to. We could put our time and energy into something else. I know in, in our, we've got successful careers away from because this. Collective, yeah. But this has become our, our family. And yeah. I feel like, like we were saying before, our dynamic is like a mother-father. Our dynamic is like a brother-sister, uh, masculine-feminine. And we bounce between them both. Yeah, and, we and both flow into each of them. Yeah our, yeah, our leaders share that with us. The people at our events are like, okay, we've been to cer ceremonies before and meditations, but this was different. Yeah, And I think we knew our, like, how good we are at what we do the value we bring but when it's reflected back of our events selling out yeah. people saying when's the next one we yeah. want to come to it Messaging bring their us, friends exactly the the big one that stands out is um when we had messages from people being like i felt like i was at home yeah i felt so safe it felt like my family and i've never been seen heard or accepted like I have with us and I think that from us was something we set from day one was like if we're going to create something we're not going to make it like these other groups that we've been a part of that just feel like you're in it just because of the money yeah you're just a number yeah um, and it's just because of this we do free events yeah. paid events uh, and, and again all different tiers, tiers. Yeah. and again we don't have to but we we love it and it's fun like Oh, our retreat, we ate bread and, and mimosas all day. We became a bread roll yeah. at the end of it. Like it was, you know, and the things that happen, the one thing that is important for us is that people actually see us, right? Yeah. We recognize the fact that most of the time we're working and we're holding space, but we also want people to see the authentic versions of us. So we remove mm. the filter, we remove the veil and we let people <laughs> see us. We, you know, let our community see us vulnerable and sharing things that are intimate and personal to us. And that's important for us because we're not just building a community, we're building a family and we're building friendships that will last a lifetime. Yeah. And the one thing that's also been important for us is creating a community in which people aren't only invested in us, yeah. right? We want you guys all to connect and yeah. you, we want you to create your own little networks. That's always been the design. It doesn't have to be, we're not holier than thou, right? <coughs> it's not, you know, the almighty Carlo and G, although sometimes we do yeah. think that way, but it's not <laughs> like that, right? It's like, we want you to see your truest potential and make sure that you're living up to that. And we will support you in any which way we can. And yeah. We tend to learn a lot of the things the hard way, but we're doing you a favor and we are collapsing time and space in order for you to just, you know, get the express train there. So, yeah. you know. And I think that's that's become possible. And like I have these realizations all the time that you are someone that steps into who do I need to be? Mm. You're someone that steps into, okay, 
limitations, stuff that comes up, all of that's fine and, and we all have them, in, it, whether it's insecurities or whatever, but you go, this is who I am, I know who I am and I'm stepping into it. Even if it's an uncomfortable thing. So Period. you were saying it the other day on the call where you were mm. like, I step into, I'm a 10 or a 12 out of 10 and, and this is who I am and you step into that. And I think that's what's been inspiring for me, but it's been like we've both being able to nurture each other through that yeah. there always has to be some sort of leadership in absolutely. whatever we're doing absolutely. if there was no leadership it would just go everywhere disintegrate absolutely yeah so we've set that tone and, uh, and now we're watching our, our kids grow in the yeah. leadership program and that come from you thank you and us Oh, together, but it's, absolutely it's, it's cultivated. It's like that, yeah. that dynamic. Let's offer some context, right? Because yeah. they're not going to really understand what that means. So basically, mm. we were talking about, you know, energetically showing up. Because a lot of the time, you have the vision, but you mm. don't necessarily have the follow-through. You even receive the intuitive nudges, okay, yeah. guiding you, directing you. But actually taking the intuitive action feels difficult, okay? Mm. So I said this. This is my way of life. Mm. I was like... People are often ask me, why do you attract certain people? And I was like, because when I walk out of my house... The moment I leave my house, I walk out as a 10, regardless of any conditioned beliefs, regardless of my fears, regardless of my doubts, regardless of my awareness that, of course, there are hotter people, more beautiful people, more connected people out in the world. Yeah. But I walk out as a 10. Do you know why? Because there is not one other person on the earth, past, present or future, that is me, nor will ever be me. Yeah. Even my past lives that had the same soul embodiment is not my expression, my fragment of self. So therefore, when I walk, my, walk out of my house, I walk out as a 10. And so naturally, I attract experiences and people and energies that mirror that energy. And what's interesting is that if you want to create a complexity here, it's like that doesn't necessarily mean you're going to attract people that are hot, okay? Because not everyone who's hot sees themselves as a 10 energetically, right? So it's about attracting level 10 experiences and I think that's why you and I continue to attract such fun experiences because we bring the energy of 10s out into the world and that's not just physically right that is definitely energetically 10 10 10 10, 20 (laughs) what is that 10 10 20 20 50s on them titties bitch and we've just checked the explicit box so (laughs) this is now not a kids show um is that serious you have to now (laughs) otherwise I get flagged that's all right it's all good. As if it wasn't going to go down that far. Yeah, path someone anyway. was going to drop uh, an F bomb or something somewhere. That's all right. Every every episode Titties it happens. Bitch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See how like we're, but that's us. Yeah. We're just we express, and, and I think the other thing that where I like how we do it, and and our leaders are like, oh, you don't have to be this little boxed version of what a spiritual leader looks like online and we see that so much you work with them I work with them and it's just like just be you and you will attract that's the 10 you will attract it because you're being you in the in the best version of that what you're talking about before is that law of attraction Okay, well, there we are governed by all the laws of the universe, yep. one being the law of attraction, right? So the law of attraction essentially is like attracts like, but that is just one of many um, laws. Now, I'm going to give you the simplified version of the law of attraction, right? So we release energy called biophotonic particles, right? Mm-hmm. Now, biophotonic particles are essentially, they hold memory, okay? So whatever you are feeling you project that energetically. Now, biophotonic particles look for other particles that match their vibrational frequency, right? Their vibratory frequency. So if I feel abundant, I will attract abundance. Literally, those biophotonic particles are looking for that to magnetize towards each other. So it's not even I have to go looking. I literally, whatever I'm projecting out as energy it attracts back to me so the same is with like level 10 energy if i am projecting the energy of confidence of connection of family of love then naturally all of those experiences people anything that is projecting that same frequency will gravitate towards me all right that's great that's just law Mm -hmm. right but we also have like the law of divine oneness the law of divine oneness is that i am connected to all things everything is me right so that's also another element to this that naturally i will feel at home within everyone when i recognize that there's no separation between them and me Mm -hmm. right and we often do that with our clients and with our community that we see ourselves within them so we um, empathize and we sympathize and we can connect on a deeper level So there are so many laws of the universe, but definitely the law of attraction is one of them. And it's a big one. It's one that Mm. we teach. 
Um, and I think it's also one that's often misunderstood. Like I have to think positive thoughts to attract positive thoughts. It's not so much of what you're thinking versus how you're feeling, how you're being, how you're projecting. I can think a negative thought and not judge that thought. Let it coexist in my mind, recognizing that it's temporary, it's fleeting, it's moving through me, but that's not who I be. Who yeah. I be is a frequency that's always tuned in to love, to light, to happiness, to joy, to abundance. And naturally, I gravitate towards those experiences, right? Mm. Boom chakalaka. Uh, that's the end of the podcast. <laughs> um, no. <laughs> no more episodes. Yeah, and, and Done. And finished. <laughs> finito. And this is why I love working with you and, and being your friend and all this because you have so much wisdom in this noggin here. This, <laughs> in this, this thing, soul. This, this thing. How did you... How did you step into all of this where did, where did your your world of spirituality come into play it started a millennia ago no I'm just yeah. kidding it started in like 6,000 lives ago <laughs> um. it started when source was one energy particle and it exploded into <laughs> trillions of pieces to know who it could be but no really <laughs> in this lifetime <laughs> <laughs> in this lifetime, really, you should read my book. But um, which book? What which book are you talking about? Segway. S- excuse me. I I wrote a book, everyone. Yeah. If if see. the sunshine is on there, if you're watching wherever you're watching, or if you're listening, cool. Tell, yeah. Tell us well, all right. So, uh, like before I get yeah. into that. Right? <laughs> so I wrote a book. It's called God Is Me: um, The Path of Enlightenment Through Self Reflection, and it's essentially like not a traditional book. So it doesn't have a start, middle, or end. It's just a series of notes and reflections. As I thinketh, so do I writeth. <laughs> mm. Sure. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it's a really cool book. There is a lot of divine wisdom in there. I've totally outgrown the version of me that wrote it though, and yet I still learn things from it, right? Yeah. So I am beyond it. So I'm very much so looking forward to writing my next book, but um, I'm excited. It's it's a long time coming. I think I started this book about seven years ago. Whoa. So to actually have it finished um, makes me very proud. I was but just about to say two years in the making, seven years yeah, in the making. It's, yeah, I started a long time ago. So if you feel uninspired about writing your book because you keep putting it down, have faith, all right? Mm. One day that you will just receive that nudge to just keep writing. That's what happened to me. The beautiful cover is designed by the beautiful Stacey Jessop, who I adore, one of my close friends. She drew this intuitively for me. I didn't even ask her to, um, and it was so perfect. So... I love it. I'm obsessed with it. The book launches soon. Can you see? It's the sun. It's a bit the hard sun. with the sun. There yeah. we go. That one. <laughs> <laughs> um, Everyone but, yeah. listening on the audio is like, I, I can envision it. I can, I can kind of see it. I can kind of see it. Anyway, Click so on the links below and you can buy one. Um, <laughs> um, but to go back to the original question. Yep. For me, it was like I've been raised in a family that has always been very open to spirituality. Um, for my dad, it was more like a in a divine masculine way. It was very much so religion focused and you know aliens and scientific. Whereas my mum was your typical divine feminine. We were she was just like essential oils and fairies yeah. and <laughs> organites and crystals and. I always used to roll my eyes at my mom, like, oh, my God, what's this crazy doing again? And then one day I was like, oh, my God, she's right. Yeah. And I was like, <laughs> mom, I'm so sorry that I thought you were a widow all these years. But it was even like growing up, whenever we were sick, my mom would give us colloidal silver. Like, that was our medicine, right? Mm-hmm. And I w- it always worked, but I was always just like, oh, yeah, my mom's remedy. But then when I got older, I started researching for myself, and I was like, oh, okay, there's something about this. So for me, having that freedom to explore allowed me no resistance to dive in and connect with source, right? And I think that that's why, like most of this for me comes through meditation, but I recognize that it's because I just, I didn't offer resistance to the experience. I didn't have conditioned beliefs attached to my spiritual um, wisdom. And I do recognize that that's not the same for everyone. Most people you know, come out of a religion or come out of no religion or, you know, have all of these ideas imposed on them based on their culture, based on the people that uh, they're surrounded with. And because I didn't have that, I essentially had the blank slate, which allowed me to dive real deep. I also recognize that this is lifetimes in the making. Mm. Um, You know, I absolutely recognize that. I can feel the glare of the sun has literally (laughs) followed us. So now I have this beautiful bright patch, but that's okay. 
Um, yeah, it's lifetimes in the making. I do understand that. And this was part of my destiny in this lifetime. Mm -hmm. Either way, it's led me to this path and I just really trust it. And I very much so allow it to evolve organically. So when I change my mind about something, you literally hear me, like I'll send Carlo a voice and I'll be like, oh, I've decided to do this now. Like when I said I'm retiring from coaching, he's like, what? You're like 30. And I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm retiring from coaching. Um, and that's just, yeah, I go with the flow. Yeah. I feel like you're pretty good at going with the flow too. Sometimes you get caught up with it. But I think that you're pretty much a go with the flow kind of guy. I think I've definitely learned that yeah. from from you and and people around me, uh, my partner and, and all of that. Very flowy, feminine yeah. people around me, but uh, definitely come from a very structured sort of masculine sort of yeah. background of like, show me the results. Here's the plan. Here's the schedule. The contingency. All of that. And I think there is a time and place Absolutely. for both. And it's it's the you need the balance. The mesh of both that creates. You know, because there's, there's going to be times, like we even think about it with the collective, we we try, you know, let's go back to, we tried organizing, or we, we, yeah, we, we organized a retreat to be in Costa Rica. Yeah. And, you know, you can have, we had all the beliefs, we had all, everything there, but things didn't happen in the way that we needed them to. And we had a contingency where we could have lost $100,000, but... We chose we, to lose only 5000 we, we didn't. And that... <laughs> That for me, if, if, if I was structured of like, that's a failure, end this now. Because yeah. we lost money. Yeah, we did. Like, we, we've been in the red. Um, everyone sees us now, and, and you're probably listening to this of just, you know, recently joining the podcast. If you've been here since day one, we love you. You've probably listened to Gregoria and followed her for all this time. And the Conscious Collective and our journey. If you're not in the group, get in the group. Um, but it's, if I was so rigid on ways, and we were, if we were so rigid, we would have stopped because a if, thousand times if you look this. at it anyone else everyone everyone wants to uh, this is a whole nother rant in itself everyone wants to do the things yep. whether it's start the business have the successful business write the book build the community host the events and we've seen this with people that have come to us and Absolutely. gone I want to do this and we go okay go do it yep. but it's not just the fact of doing it it's the commitment long term but you, we have Absolutely. to be flexible like how much is our lives, you, you get this from me in my voice notes, where I have those moments too where I go, I'm doing this, now I'm not doing this, now I'm doing this, now I'm not doing this. And it's like, <laughs> forever. it's allowed to. If it was so rigid, it, it, you, you'd get so down on yourself and you'd stop doing anything. Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, at the end of the day, having that flexibility, but also pairing that with the long-term commitment, yeah. right? We're playing the long game, has allowed us to really move through the ebbs and flows that naturally happen anyway. They naturally occur. Like every business will see the high highs and low lows, right? And we've definitely seen our fair share of low lows, <laughs> but we've also seen our fair share of high highs. And now I really reflect on everything we have achieved, right? Or come to experience or come to realize in the physical world in our business. And it wouldn't have been possible if we had given up every time there was a little dip, there was a little lull. And you could literally use that as a metaphor for life, right? We have these low lows and that's when people feel like they need to like run against the wind. And the metaphor that I use, the analogy I use with our leaders and with our community, I've got this glare in my face, um, <laughs> is... I use the metaphor of the surfer, okay? So imagine a surfer, like this gorgeous, blonde-haired, blue-eyed surfer riding a wave in a Torquay Beach or Bells Beach, yeah. right? Okay, and he is on cloud nine. He's like loving life. He's riding the wave. He's happy. That is the perfect moment for him to be in the present moment, for him to um, plant seeds of desires, yeah. um, be in flow state, all of that. Incredible. The moment he falls off the board and he's underwater, what is his number one priority? His number one priority is to get back up to air, okay? Mm -hmm. And this is what happens, what I notice with people. They find themselves underwater and that's when they want to plant seeds of desire. They want to criticize themselves. They want to reflect on their lives. They want to do all of these things. Baby, 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 your one job is to breathe again. Your one job is to get yourself back into a place of alignment where you feel relaxed, okay? It's not a time to sit there and plant seeds of desire, do all the hustle. It's time to retreat, to rest, to relax. And as you naturally re relax, it's like when you're stuck in a rip. They literally say, stop fighting it. Just surrender and you will be pushed out of it. So I love that metaphor. I continually remind myself, am I 
underneath the water trying to breathe or am I riding the wave? And that will determine what decisions I make in life, in business, in friendships, in relationships, whatever. Um, and sometimes we're all human. Sometimes I will make decisions from a place of drowning and it's never in alignment with my highest good. And I recognize that. I get emotionally involved because I have an emotional charge directing that decision. But that will never be the decision that's for my highest good. It will always be pushing against the current, the natural flow state. Um, if you talk about Abraham Hicks, Abraham Hicks talks about the path of least resistance, right? It's literally the natural flow state. Now, the, the, metaphor, <laughs> the metaphor that Abraham uses, which I love and I've always used, imagine this beautiful glass right here. All right, if you're just listening, I'm holding up a glass. Now, imagine a glass filled with water. Okay, this one isn't, but imagine it's filled with water. If I have a cork and I push it down, that's resistance. That's literally me under the water, right? Pressure, resistance. The moment I move my finger off the cork, what does it do? It naturally bounces up to the top because we are naturally inclined to be in flow state. Nothing more is required of us. We don't need to try and be in alignment. We're born in alignment. We will always be in alignment. The human experience is a fragment of self. It is one tiny, minute fragment of self. The infinite self is always in alignment with the, the source, right? So we don't need to try to be. When people say, what am I doing wrong? I'm like, stop trying. Literally, the moment you stop trying, fully surrender. And what is true surrender? True surrender is accepting things as they are without the desire or need to change them. And yeah. the moment you surrender and you release the control, um, and the control is restriction. The, the control is confinement. The moment you release and you're just like, you know what? I'm very content with this in whichever way it's flowing. I'm listening, I'm paying attention, I'm meditating, I'm letting myself flow, then everything works in your favor. Everything, every single thing. Um, and even things that, you know, you think you want, I recognize that even my desires have come from the 3D world. I think I want this thing because I think I'm going to feel better in the having of them. But the truth is, maybe what's for my highest good is beyond this desire. So this is what I, this is my new mantra. I say, what's for me will always be mine. And if it's not for me, don't have me want it. I don't even want to want mm -hmm. what's not for me. Don't even let me have that as a desire. You know that boy over there? If he's not for me, I don't even want to want it. Um, it's that kind of energy because I want to want what's actually for my highest good. Yeah. And regardless of what my human self perceives as a desire, right? Because desire is only from the 3D world. Not that you can't have them. Of course you can. Yeah. But I want the desires that will allow me to connect with source in the best possible way. Ascension. I'm playing the long game, baby. My soul has done all the things. And in this lifetime, we're fast tracking. <laughs> and that's why we met. <laughs> Could have met anyone that day. We True. met. True. And I got stuck with you. Uh, <laughs> and I'm grateful that I did. Um, <laughs> so if, if, okay, so I, I like this, where we're going with this. Do you? I do. Okay. So we have the vision and, and G comes on my um, my program and runs an incredible vision session that I use and, and love. It's been impactful for my life and all Mine 78 too. clients that have been through the program. Period. And everyone else that you've 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 in, um, impacted through that that masterclass, but you, you create a vision. But the path of least resistance is stop. Is it releasing the desperation? Is it releasing the trying to control it? Is it releasing the it's releasing the expectation of, because this is how I talk about the vision. When, how? The details, yeah. right? I, it's like the navigation system metaphor that I use. When I want to go to my friend's house, let's say I want to go to Carla's house, he's just moved house. I put the address in my navigation system. Now, the universe will direct me. The navigation system will direct me. It will tell me turn right, turn left, whatever. I listen to it. Let's say I take a wrong turn. What happens is it reroutes, right? It redirects me. Yeah. If I continue taking wrong turns though, it will just, I will still get there, but it'll add minutes and minutes and minutes and longer. minutes and minutes. Yeah. That's the same with our life. The more I resist the natural flow, the natural current, the longer it will take. I get to hold the vision of the what, the how, the logistics is up to the universe, right? And here's what I say about any kind of vision. I even want my desires to come from an intuitive place, right? You have natural inclinations. The same way I'm a spiritual teacher. Trust me, it would be easier for me to have a nine-to-five job, right? <laughs> really, it would. But this was a natural inclination for me. So I stepped into it. I immersed myself in it. 
but I wasn't attached to any specific expectation. I had the intention to allow it to flow, to allow it to evolve, to, for me to fully immerse myself, for me to commit, for me to take the action, but I wasn't attached to any kind of expectation. It was like, if this is going to be what it'll be, cool. And if it's not, cool, right? Yeah. Um, so that's about your desires. Have the vision, have the desires, but don't be fixed or attached to any expectations because naturally they will evolve. Even yesterday on my Instagram stories, I was showing everyone my 2021 plans. From when I created them at the end of 2020 to now, which is only what? Three months in, right? Five. But okay. <laughs> Gregoria, have you been awake? It's, it's, it's flown. Have yeah, you been yeah. awake? Yeah. All right. So five months in, they've changed so much because again, I'm not mm. attached to the outcome. I'm attached to the it intention only. And the intention for me, for me personally, is always to be in alignment. So, you know, my desires shift and I let them. Yeah. Make and sense? And I think that's such an important lesson for everyone because do a little dance. we do... We do get so caught up on it has to be this way and if it's not and that's where I think like we've seen that with our leaders is that they think it has to be done a certain way. Absolutely. And that's what a lot of people out there say. It has to be this way. You must do it. This, these 10 steps are the only steps. Yeah. And I think, you know, what you've been able to share with a lot of people even in your journey and, and with our leaders and even with myself is that it doesn't have to be. You throw you throw plot twists in all the time. All the time, where it's like, yeah, but what if what if not? What if it again? Let's let's put this into like a, a context of let's say making money, and I say, okay, I want five thousand dollars a month. That's uh, five one thousand dollar sales in my clients sure. uh, with clients. You go plot twist. What if you get something in the mail saying here's five thousand dollars for being period. Uh, <laughs> going to say something really inappropriate then for the podcast but just for being an awesome guy <laughs> try and try and figure out two words that I could have said then that's yeah. <laughs> SC anyway um, <laughs> for just being an awesome guy here's $5,000 but we close ourselves off we were talking Absolutely. about ceilings last night we go that's not possible but is it possible it we live in infinite possibilities, right? So and here's the thing about a conditional universe. If I can find how the universe can um, draw it upon me or, or allow it to come into my experience or for me to come to the realization of it, I literally create a veil from it. I, I can't even see it if it's in front of me. Okay, yeah. so that's why I don't confine spirit. When I ask for abundance to come into my experience yes naturally my mind will automatically go to my business all right because that already has momentum when it comes to my abundance but if i'm supposed to win the lottery if i'm supposed to get an inheritance if i'm supposed to find something on the ground if i'm supposed to get some random opportunity if i'm i allow it the perfect example just before we got in this call i got a phone call from this someone call. Hmm? oh this podcast sorry <laughs> um i got a phone call from someone that really i didn't expect right because i had said no to this opportunity you you de detached you you I released com completely yeah. released but i said to god all right i said if it's for me it will be mine and then i get this random phone call and i was like that is weird because mm. i didn't even like i had completely detached from that but if something is for you it will be yours and and you know i can personally attest to that because I remember the voice note of you going nah I'm not doing it yeah. that's it if they want me they'll they'll call me yeah. if it's for me it'll be for me yeah. now what other areas of life can that apply to every single one okay <laughs> every single one because like relationships that's a perfect example actually mm. when you have an emotional charge or an emotional connection to someone you have bias, mm -hmm. you have a natural expectation because you feel attached to that specific person, to that specific outcome. But the one thing that I've learned in my journey is you actually can't fuck up what's for you. You can't. <laughs> it doesn't matter what text messages you've sent them. It doesn't matter what voice notes. It doesn't matter how angry or emotional you've been. If something is for you, it will always be. Mm. It will always be, okay? And if something isn't, it doesn't actually matter what you do. Yeah. It's not for you, okay? And I feel, and the moment that that becomes easier is when you release it. Yeah. I had a moment of realization actually yesterday and I was like, oh, I've been holding on to this emotional charge for way too long unnecessarily. Maybe, maybe I should just release it. 
if it's for me, it's going to be mine. And if it's not, then I'm allowing space for the right thing to come into my mm. experience, right? Because the moment I hold on to something with literally like closed hands, and that's what people do. Like, I want this thing. I want this thing because this is the thing that I want. <laughs> and the moment you do that, you don't even allow space for energy to flow. Yeah. 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 And we, it's even with our house, like we're on this house hunt right now. And it's like, I really want this house or I really want this house. Or we can just let it flow and whichever house is for us has always been ours and we will find it and it will, it will naturally gravitate to us. Um, it's funny because I forgot to even mention, like my uncle had a thing where he's like, I might have this house for you, whatever, whatever. And I was just like, that's how it happens when you're open. Yeah. If I wasn't open, I wouldn't have even had that conversation with him. Yeah. yeah? And I think that even in our business, it's been like that. Oh, this cool opportunity to partner, to network, to connect with all of these other businesses. So if you're going to take anything from this podcast, it's let it flow, but in a way that's intentional. That's the difference. I'm not fully in my feminine where I'm just going with the flow airy fairy. <laughs> I still have vision. I still have intentions. Yeah. I still see the trajectory of my life, but not with confinement, not with restriction. Okay, that's how you yeah. balance the divine masculine and divine feminine. That's how you both feel the stability and the consistency of the masculine, but you're also very much so in the spontaneity and the fluidity and the unpredictability of the feminine. I'm very comfortable with the unknown. So much so that this is what I've been sharing with clients recently. It's only unknown to the human self. Every single other part of me, the infinite self is the all knowing. So the only part of me that doesn't know is the human self. And I don't even need to know it because if I'm constantly being directed by the infinite self, I don't need to know the details. Yeah. I need to trust the infinite self. And then I will always be directed on the path that's for my highest good. And so it is. Amen. Mm. Because we place so much attachment and happiness and my life will be perfect when this happens. And it's almost like creating resistance between Absolutely. us now and it. And you're allowed to have all those things. But if it's, if I don't have this... Then I'm unhappy. Then I'm unhappy. Yeah. Then I'm, I'm not whole or any of this. I failed. It, it I means whatever. we're basically confirming that you're not that. And it's pushing you almost further away Absolutely. from it. As you were talking, I was like, okay, let it flow, let it go, let it flow, it'll show. Oh, I love that. And it's like, let go, let God, right? But I love that. That should be a new and Conscious how, Collective mantra. How, it's going to be on the back of our jumpers. Uh, <laughs> oh my God, merch, <laughs> merch everyone. <laughs> Buy our Conscious Collective jumpers. So, tell me how I am God. Or how you are God, or how we are God. Because okay. the title of the book is, God, God is, is Me. me. And I love that you even brought that up because I am not God, nor are you. And the idea of the book is that I am not God, but God is me, God is you, God is all of us because we are the individualizations of God. And when I refer to God, I mean God, universe, angel, source, energy, infinite intelligence, mm -hmm. original. No religion attached. Yeah, it's whatever your truth is. It really doesn't matter. And well, but we, we respect everyone. Absolutely. If they're religions or anything Absolutely. Like that. Yeah. If you're attached to any kind of belief, it's still of the original source. So it's true. All yeah. truths are true. Okay. Um, but the idea is that I am not God, but God is me. So if God is me, God lives within me, I'm an individualization of God, then the way I perceive God is actually how I perceive self, okay? So if I believe that God is the Almighty, God is the creator, not so much the creator in the book, I write the source of creation, then that mm. energy, that power, that infinity, that eternity exists within me. So I am essentially unlimited. I very much so recognize that we're on a human experience in the third density, therefore meaning I am limited by this human flesh suit, right? I can't necessarily jump out of a plane and fly, and yet maybe I can, right? If my beliefs um, supersede that conditioned belief, then maybe one day I will tap into the energy or frequency of me being able to do that. Not that I'm asking any of you to jump out of a plane. We're not saying jump out of a plane. Warnings, <laughs> warnings. But my point is, is that we are conditioned to believe that we are limited and confined in such a way that it is exclusive to the human experience when it's very much so not. We are connected to the infinite supply. We are connected to eternity. We are connected to infinity. We're also connected to something so far beyond the human experience that we can't even comprehend it because we're limited and confined in the human psyche, right? So we can only perceive using this brain, this mind. So even when you think of the universe, okay, think of all the planets, all the galaxies, all the stars, all the whatever, beyond as far as you can think. What is beyond that? There has to be more beyond that, but we can't even conceive it mm -hmm. because 
like it has never been planted as an idea in the human consciousness, right? It exists in the collective consciousness some way, way out there, but at a place that feels um, uninhibited by the human mind, right? This is getting super complex. So it's it's not so much, you know, this is the, the world of G. Sometimes I go on these tangents. Yeah. Um, but that the idea is that whatever you want for your life, it exists within you. Everything mm. is within. The entire universe resides in this present moment. In, in my illumination container recently, we were talking about actually the depth of this on how every single thing that exists in the entire universe and beyond it, beyond our comprehension and understanding is actually happening at this exact moment, at this exact time, in this exact space. And that's very hard for us to understand because even when we think of parallel universes and multiple dimensions and um, alternate narratives and timelines, we think of them as far away, but they're not. They all coexist in this moment. The same way that when you wanna listen to a certain station on the radio, you turn the button. All frequencies are being emitted and received through that same portal, okay? But you tune in to a specific one, all right? So right now we're tuned into this timeline at this time space reality, but all of them coexist in this moment through a certain receiver. Mm -hmm. So that, Did that frequency, that vibration, is that our perception? No, frequency is everything. Frequency is yeah. energy, right? So everything exists as a frequency and it all has a different kind of, like if I were to use words that you can understand, like a different station. Yeah. Right? So we tune into a different energetic frequency, um, but they all exist. Well, when it comes to the 3D experience, we all exist in a bandwidth of frequency that is perceived as three-dimensional, all right? Yeah. But there are other bandwidths of frequency that are beyond that, four-dimensional, five-dimensional, and so on and so on and so on, right? But... What is perceived to us? Because even think of this right now. So this book, it's 3D. You can see it. You can perceive it as a three-dimensional thing. I can also perceive this bottle as a three-dimensional thing, right? Um, if you're listening, visualize. Now, the space in between those two things we think is empty space. But the truth is, is it's still energy and frequency. So who's to say that there isn't a unicorn here with us right now? Maybe we can't perceive it, but that doesn't mean it's not real as frequency. Okay, so we are just, because we are third density humans, we perceive 3D very easily. Now, mm. the way, best way to describe this is think of an alien who's fifth density, okay? So they're observing the world from above. They will not be able to distinguish the difference between what we perceive as 3D and our imagination, our dreams, our thoughts. They will see it all coexisting on this plane of reality because for them, they're tuned in to perceive all Di dimensions, all densities, right? Mm -hmm. Up until the 5D. So for them, it's going to, this world will look very different. It's like how certain birds can see different color auras that we can't perceive, right? Because we're tuned into different frequencies. Say, animals. animals. Animals have, they can, like dogs animals. can hear uh, higher frequencies. Absolutely. Uh, cats, you know, I was reading something recently that they can see certain things. They've been around since, you know, the Pharaoh sort of days. They've got certain Abilities. Abilities yeah. that they're tapped into. And, and you can see it with people. Like, Absolutely. You know, Some people even, are more tuned in. Yourself, like how you can channel, mm. how you've got these uh, highly tuned psychic abilities. Um, people that we see that are healers and stuff like that. It's not that we're uh, different beings. We're humans, but the ability that tapped in sort of thing, you've, you've released those resistance. layers of, of resistance and, and limitations absolutely and we all have that ability go back to the animals for a quick second so animals are actually known as second density right so they aren't third density but in order for us to move into the 3d experience a third density experience this isn't three-dimensional it's third density it's different right but for us to move into it we actually had to um soften our connection to source because animals are naturally instinctive okay they instinctively know like a like a dog will naturally know to chase a cat right it's instinctive they know how to tune in they know how to listen to the moon cycles when to migrate they don't when get to upset mate. when yeah, something they don't have goes emotional wrong attachments, yeah. whatever. <laughs> but in order for us to create um, a conscious mind in which we can make decisions, in which we can understand, you know, existence to the depth that we can, we actually had to soften our connection or silence it to source. So we in this 3D world are trying to relearn what the animals already know, all right? But they don't have the same kind of complex um, thinking that we do. 
right? We have like an added layer. And the same will happen in the 4D when we move into that. A lot of our natural inclinations in the third density will silence and we will have to relearn them in order to tap into a new outlook, a new interpretation. Um, but exactly that, we all have these abilities. Like someone said to me, it was funny, I was shopping for the book launch and this lady goes, why are you buying all of these things? I'm like, oh, I wrote a book. She's like, oh my God, congratulations. She's like, what's the book about? And I told her, she goes, are you a psychic? And I go to her, we all are. She goes, actually, you're right. And I was like, absolutely. Mm. We all have these abilities, but how much resistance do you offer to them? When I do my card readings, people, order, I will always say to my clients, you've had some from me. I'll say, Love them. <laughs> I am not here because I have more powers than you do. I am here as a clear enough channel because I offer less resistance to your experience, no emotional attachment. And that's why it's easy for me to interpret the messages. I never deny or reject my intuition. When I hear it, I believe it. That's it. Mm -hmm. I don't question it. But most people question their own intuitive nudges. They're like, oh, but, but. Yeah. The logical mind tells me something different. But the reality doesn't align with that intuitive nudge. But it's the truth. And I've had a moment recently where my intuition is telling me something that I continue to reject because I'm like, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. But I have to trust my intuitive wisdom because it's coming from a higher perspective. Mm -hmm. uh, Love. Uh, uh. There. Uh, Tell me about what we've got coming up because we've got a lot. We have so much. So, the first book launch that's big one. Book launch 28th of May. I know this podcast is going to be released before that, but if you're listening to it after, you can still buy my book. We'll have links <laughs> in the bio. Um, but book launch 28th of May, it's going to be yes. so fun. Limited to 100 tickets, but it includes a signed copy of the book plus so many goodies. I have like thousands of dollars worth of giveaways, door prizes as well that mm. people have so generously donated. Um, it's going to be super fun. I'm going to have food and I'm going to have champagne and I'm going to have music playing. It's going to be really fun. And you get to see me and eat cupcakes, which you love. So <laughs> I love these cupcakes. Win, yeah. win, win, <laughs> win. And, and there'll be so many amazing people there. And I think if, really fun if you're people. listening to this and you vibe with us and you obviously listen to the podcast, if you vibe with me and, and, and us and you're in Melbourne, uh, even if you're not, you know, good excuse to come to Melbourne. Oh, please. Um, we'll, but you'll get it. to be around such amazing people and, and the energy of this book, the energy of you and just celebrate Gregoria because you, you have offered so much to the world and this is just Thank another... You way a resource that you're going to impact so many more people thank so you. i'm so, so excited for you i can't wait for the 28th of may Yay. and then the next day we will have a cacao ceremony yes, that we will be so hosting excited. and facilitating which has been uh, a crowd favorite amongst yep. the collective it's sold out twice the two times we've done it this year and it's been uh it's been magical so, so magical two very powerful experiences coming up. Um, and then we've got, you know, we've got an event next week in Muldura. Yes. Uh, women's wellness, um, which is super exciting. And then we've also got our money event coming up in two weeks in Melbourne. We have a lot going on. We do. It's like yeah. weekend after weekend. And I think this is this is where we've always wanted to be. Yeah. It's, it's getting to this point where, even I was thinking the other day, I think I messaged you and I was like, I might have to take less time on my stuff and more time into the collective because it's, 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 not become a beast, but it's become a its beast. own. Okay, it's become <laughs> a beast. It's become <laughs> its, own it. its own entity. That's yep. like <laughs> this is where we 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 clash. Not clash, but we're like we are very different, mm. and we're also very alike. The difference is, is I want to do an event every weekend, every and day. And Gre Gregory is like, no, <laughs> <laughs> no. I want to do Boundaries. three day events. Boundaries. G wants to do three-hour events. <laughs> so this is why we're always mixing it up. But I think we're getting to that point where we are creating transformational experiences in our own lives, but also as a collective. And that's why we're just, we're excited. We yeah. want to bring, we're, with the Conscious Collective, we've set this up in four internal empires. Yeah. What was the first one? Heart set? Heart set, which was amazing. It was all about that heart expansion yeah. and really connecting to your heart. And that's about bringing up your limiting beliefs, bringing up mm. your wounds, bringing up your it's trauma, emotional. figuring it out, like figuring out, yeah. am I feeling my feelings? Yep. Yeah. And and opening our heart. And I think that was, those three months, a that lot of emotional. people felt it. Yeah. Oh my God. Our events, the amount of, you know, <laughs> hugs, tears, the tears. eye gazing, the, the depth Connection. of... That experience yeah. for a lot of people were like, whoa. Yeah. I never knew I could feel this way. It was amazing. Yeah. And yeah. like, you don't normally cry. I you, never cry, but very this year. very emotional three months. <laughs> this year, I've like all the... And I'm not an overly emotional <clears throat> person, but this year, I'm like, maybe I need to stop saying that because maybe I am. Mm -hmm. Maybe I've unlocked something through this experience. Mm -hmm. All right, next. That was magical. That um, was magical. And then we have now... Mindset. Mindset. And we've had some events... It's more so leading into this is our big one. This, this is, is our big ticket. Yeah. 
And this is the difference. So heart sets very divine feminine focus. So that's where we were tapping into the emotional charges, the feelings, the the um, the the ideas and the feelings and the energies that you can't necessarily hold. They're not tangible, okay? Yeah. Whereas mindset is more, okay, this is my programming and this is how I can shift from them. This is what I think and believe, but this is how I can reframe. Mm-hmm. This is how I can reprogram. So it's a lot more now in the divine mas- masculine energy. And, you know, our leaders in our leadership program have definitely noticed us shift energetically because we were very soft and patient with them in the heart set. But now it's like, okay, you're not taking action. Why? Why aren't we taking action? What do we need to do to bridge that gap? Yeah. Right? So it's we're definitely leaned into the or stepped into the divine feminine. I call it lean back into the feminine or step into the masculine. Sorry, I'm getting all confused. Yeah. So step into the masculine. Um, and this big money event is like perfect masculine energy. Now we are incorporating the divine feminine because you always have to, mm. right? So we're doing a lot of mindset work. We're doing a lot of um, limiting beliefs work, reprogramming, but then we have a lot of stuff. relationship yeah. stuff. Yeah. Like is my relationship to money toxic or is it healthy? Yeah. But then we have a lot of the masculine. We're going to create actual plans, learn strategies with like amazing guest speakers, create a money mindset blueprint. Mm -hmm. Like literally you can walk away with a plan, a play-by-play, a play-by-play if you will. So (laughs) you who likes the structure, you can literally take home your workbook and be like, all right, step one, step two, step three. This is what I do. This is how I can take action. This is how much money I have. This is what I can do with it, right? So it's very, very exciting. It's an event that we've wanted to do for a very long time. Yeah, and I think we're bringing together so many different elements of like, we we know we all have to experience money in our life and we've all got different experiences and it's it's not about being like, this is the right way, this is the wrong way. It's what are your beliefs? What is your situation? And how can we improve on that? How can we break the ceiling yeah. of beliefs, of conditions that you have so that you can not again, not have a toxic relationship to money or, or a negative relationship. It can be healthy. It can be fun. It can be something that, you know, is well, it was always flowing in your life, but something that's not restricted. Just like our mind, it's also, well, it comes from our mind of, of those beliefs where we're opening everything and we're, it's, you know, but the also, conscious collective. We're bringing forward the things that are unconscious yeah, so that we can absolutely. change and shift those. Yeah. And I was going to say, and also, like, not having money take up as much weight as it does. Like I always try to teach clients, have the same relationship with money that you do with water, right? When I leave my house, I don't think, oh my God, am I going to be able to find water? When I want a glass of water, I go and I get a glass of water. I never think more beyond that. I'm not thinking about water Mm 24-7, but for whatever reason, we're always thinking about money 24-7. And it's like, why have I put so much pressure? Why have I put money on a pedestal when energetically it holds the same vibration as water? So it's about reframing. It's softening the um, the way money feels when you even think about it, right? Like, I don't want to have to think about money any more than I think about water. Like, really? If I want X amount of dollars, I get to have it, period. If I want 10 liters of water, I get to have it, period. Like, there's mm-hmm. no extra complexity added to you know, the realization of water. It gets to be easy and so does money. So, yeah. yeah. That will be fun. So excited. So every all information for any of these events coming up will be in the show notes below, but also on the Conscious Collective Hub Instagram page and in the Conscious Collective on Facebook mm-hmm. um, where we put everything. And that's, I guess, been our passion, our baby for the past our baby. two and a half, three years. And it's growing. It's We're starting to produce kids and and, and build our family and our our community and we also have a leadership program that we started we we thought of this back in November and we we were like we need we want to bring people together and obviously last year we weren't able to see each other in person so we created online events and we adapted and and brought people together and we we knew the power of connection Mm -hmm. and creating space Mm -hmm. for people and and that as we're talking about right at the start that Space where people feel seen, heard, and they can also grow and feel safe yeah. as well. But then also we, we noticed that there was people that wanted to step into the leadership that we had stepped into, mm-hmm. but weren't quite sure how. And we were like, well, what's a way that we can guide people through something, yeah. but not be a one-day course? Yeah. This is something that needs to be longer term where we can sh- take them through these pillars but also give them opportunities Absolutely. to step up as leaders in, in this community because it is their, well, it's all of our community for them to step up and we thought of, you know, why not have a group of 10 leaders come through for 12 months yeah. at a time because it's all good having a good month 
what about the second month? Exactly. The follow through. It's all about the commitment because even your natural evolution, right? Like me in a year, I go through 20,000 personalities, right? So it's like sometimes I'm more motivated than other times. So we wanted to see people through all of their phases and a one year yeah. period is a very good time to do that. To be like, okay, when she hits the fan, how are you under pressure? Yeah. When things are going really good, are you taking certain actions? And when you're feeling emotional, how you're feeling, you know, women with their cycle, we've talked about this a lot in the <laughs> leadership program, like your 28 day cycle, you naturally notice when you have more energy and you want to be more creative and expressive and the times that you want to rest more. How can you create a business or a life plan that works around that natural cycle? Right, so we love the idea of holding space for people. It's just something that we're really good at. So we wanted to create a program accordingly. So if this kind of stuff is your jam, and the other thing, like this was something that we planned, not just in November, from day dot, we always yeah. said that we wanted to train people to do what we do. Okay, because we recognize that we're just two people. We can't be all over Australia and all over the world at the same time. Yeah, yeah like books help, right? But <laughs> it's not the same. So we want to train other people to host events on their own under the Conscious Collective umbrella. But even if they want to do their own thing, right? And where they can step up as leaders and learn how to hold space and learn how to offer their energy and also learn how to, when it's time to reel it in a little, like how do yeah. I preserve my energy as opposed to just offering it? Like Carlo and I, we are so different energetically. He can run a three-day event and be like, yeah, good, good to go for another three weeks. I like do a three-hour event and I'm just like, I need a nap, right? Like I need <laughs> a nap. So it's even learning to balance that. Whereas... Like he's, we've got to meet up this weekend. Carlo's going to both, I'm going to none, right? Like it's that kind of energy. We know how to assert our boundaries and that's what we teach to our leaders. So if this kind of thing is your jam, yeah. um, message us, DM us. We have another leadership program starting in July for another 12 months. And we're super, super excited about it. We already have a bunch of people involved. Um, and we're very excited to be able to guide you yeah. through this journey. It's It's a container where, you know, 12 months of being surrounded by supportive people, yep. people that have got your back. Yeah. Um, we had, we, you. we do lots of things together. A like lot. as a leader, you get access to us, which is massive. <laughs> um, <laughs> Priceless. <laughs> which is, you know, Priceless. again, like you ask our leaders, you will, if you go onto the conscious collective uh, page, there'll be a lot of promo coming out and their experience in just six months. And we've seen their transformations. Absolutely. We've seen their growth. And I've always held back being like, oh yeah, it's okay. It's good. It's like, no, it's, no, it's we've seen amazing. these leaders step amazing. up in amazing ways. And we know that it's not just because of us. Yes, no. we're, we're the ones that have set this up. But it's, it's everyone that's involved. And we had a retreat where, whoa, like <laughs> to, to talk about connection, to talk about, well, plot twist, but like talk about like just <laughs> being around good people and, you know, we've got our next one coming up. So, you know, if you join the leadership program for the next half uh, that's starting in, in July, you'll be able to come to, you know, the retreats that we've got coming up and all of that. But also all of the events, you get to see behind the scenes of yeah. how we run our business our, our brands, our businesses, and a company. Transparency. We yeah. show you everything. Everything. All the details. The money. The details. How to set up events. How to set up your business. And that's where I think we have that experience. Yeah. And, and, you know, you've got a lot more than I do. But but you also but have a lot of experience. To, yeah. Together, it's like we we can show and share and guide people through so much. Yeah. And I Fast think that's... Tracker. That's why this has been so powerful for the leaders involved, but also for us as involved as well. And that's why you're seeing the growth that you're seeing. So, yeah, if it is something you're you're interested in, you're called to, you love our energy. I think that's a big yeah. telltale. But it's not just it's not just um, work. It's also a lot of play. Like we do yeah. a lot together with our leaders. Like we go to Guinness. shisha nights and yeah. dinners, and <laughs> and you know we go to events together. Not just creating. Um, business experiences but we also connect we become friends like we've now made lifelong friends like I know I will know these people for the rest of my life yeah. and they will know each other for the rest of their lives so it's it's literally a family and I know that they're growing together so in a decade time when they're like these famous people they'll be able <laughs> to reflect on their humble beginnings and that's really powerful because you're you know you're growing together because this journey can be very lonely, all right? Yeah. Very isolating. So to be able to grow with other people, that's really incredibly powerful. And 
I love that we're the catalyst for that. We recognize that it's not us doing the work, it's you doing the work, but we're the catalysts. Um, and that has offered us so much joy. And I think that that's why we keep doing this because it's like people literally will message us and be like, you've changed our lives. Da, 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 you've changed my <laughs> life. And it's just like, this is why. This is it. Um, and this is just like, we're now in the mindset section. So it was hard set, mindset, but then we have health set and then soul set as well. So yeah. it's like, there's so much. So to, to look, we're, we're going to do more interviews. Are I we? think I reckon yeah, we could we talk we for could. like, we could do just a show just we're, we're, talking. We probably are. Like it's, it's, as soon as we move, like we're, we're planning Lift on together, moving yeah. in with a couple of friends and it's like, why not? We, we have such amazing conversations and we always say, we <laughs> that too we we always say we should have recorded this we should talk yeah. about this more and I think you know now that the podcast has changed its whole dynamic it's like yeah why not why yeah. not why put a limit on it has to be this way it's like no let's just let's just riff because there's so much value in this in every conversation yeah. that we have and and that's where you know you hang out with us look at the energy we bring here look at the knowledge and you know everything that G's talked about I get to hear this on a daily basis so for me it's just like holy shit, like this is, this is powerful. And being part of the collective, you get to be a part of that as well. And we get to share in your experience. So, And the excitement so of Carlo. much. Like he <laughs> brings so much energy. And that inspires the hell out of me because I was actually thinking today how grateful I am because if it weren't for you, I wouldn't have immersed myself in a community dynamic, right? Mm. I wouldn't have connected to so many people because I'm like the biggest introvert. <laughs> and I do credit that to you. Right, because I feel safe with Carlo, and so if he feels safe in a group of people, I feel safe in a group of people, right? Um, and I know that having you in my life has offered me so many opportunities that I would not have had on my own. So I'm incredibly grateful for that. So that's why I'm saying, like, the yin yang, it's a perfect balance. You get, you know, the spiritual woo woo wisdom of me, but you also get the fun and um, excitement and joy and passion and drive of Carlo. So, you know, marry those two worlds and you get, like, the best experience of your life. And, and you know, I know we're tooting our own horns, but it's not. These are what the leaders tell us. These are what the people tell us, not just in the leadership program, but in all of our containers and all of our programs, in all of our one on one clients. The feedback is consistent, yeah. right? And, it's life-changing stuff it's, it's not from a place of ego it's a, from no. a place of we know who we are and we know our value yeah. and we know what we can offer absolutely and the impact we're creating and that's what we want everyone to be a part of and our whole thing was to plant seeds absolutely of growth in people's minds and we do that through all the work that we're doing and like we think like in the next what two years like look what we've created in two years well imagine another two years we've got so many plans we've got <laughs> the things I don't really want to say, but I'm like, I'm sure we can and they will be coming out very soon of just imagine the impact in 10 years time yeah. of, of the events that people come to where they open up, the, you know, whether it's mindset, whether it's health, you know, the health stuff we're going to go into, oh super exciting stuff, super exciting. the soul set stuff right at the end of the year, like we're going to volunteer and yeah. help out a charity, you know, giving back to the homeless, like things like this. Imagine what that's going to do in 10 years for absolutely people, our children, the next generation coming through. And that's why we we do what we love and we love what we do. And we've, oh. we've, we've, like we said, we have fun, but we've created something that we know is special. Yeah. And even if, this is, this is a big one, like going back to that long term, every event that we've hosted, we said to ourselves, like even if it was a free meetup, because we have lots of events that we do, even if it's just us, we're going to have a good time. Absolutely. And we always do. We always do. Because we actually do have fun, just the two of us. So then add a few people and it's like a win. And there have been events where like hardly anyone shows up and we just have the best time, right? And then there are other events that so many people show up and we're just like, can we contain all this yeah. energy? But we have the best time because we recognize that we're in control of the energy we project. And as long as we always show up as we are, our authentic selves with love and with connection and with passion and with beautiful intentions, then we will always receive that in return. And we do. Mm. What a life. And you get to create it too and you, yeah. can, you can be part of it too. So there's, there's, here's the kind of levels of, of if you're loving this, if you're vibing with this, how to get involved, how to be part of the community, how to be welcomed into the family. You've got just the Conscious Collective on Instagram and Facebook. Free. Come in. Beautiful. Get all the wisdom. Get all the energy. Come to the free meetups that yeah. we have. And we're going to have them, you know, mostly Melbourne, but all over Australia. And sometimes we buy you free pizza. <laughs> <laughs> pizza party in the park. Pizza party. Um, and then 
the paid options, like, yes, we've got events. Like, we've got ceremony, which is a, a sacred space where we do uh, sacred cacao ceremonies. And they're low-ticket events. Sound they're under $100, healings. right? Yeah. Like, these are really great entryways. Powerful experiences. Then we have, you know, our, our big event every three months, which is like our money event, yeah. which is a lot of value, a lot of teaching. It's a full-day event. Mm. That's where we're really going to go in and shift a lot of things. And then, of course, there's the leadership side yeah. of things where if you want... Immersion. Immersion for 12 months with incredible people, incredible energy and lessons in just in everything, yeah. life in general, but to be part of something where you do feel safe, you have got a team, you have got you know, people praying for you and, and supporting you in so many different ways, they are there and everything will be linked below. You can go check it all out. Don't you forget can, all the links. You can All the links. <laughs> it's going to be just links as a show notes, but... <laughs> Also, what's coming up? Muldura, if you're in Muldura, come to the event. Gregory and I will be taking a mindful mindset there. side of things there. The money event. If you want to go reprogram, smash those ceilings about money and break through in, in terms of your, your relationship with money. Money event. Seriously, I can't wait for that On event. 22nd of May in Melbourne. Link below. 28th. Book launch, baby. And tickets are only $30. Like, seriously. And you get to be in our... Energy you can't field. even buy a book for $30 these well, days. Well, this book will... You get the book yeah, yeah, you get and the everything book. else. <laughs> you get the book. Um, $30. And then the very next day... Cacao. And then, yeah, going into June, we'll, we'll just have to update everything on there. Yeah. But um, if you're at, on all of those platforms, you will see everything coming out. But we look forward to connecting with everyone. But just just you. I want to acknowledge you and say thank you for thank being you. my sister, for being my, oh, my soul sister, my best friend, my business partner. And a lot of people said you can't do that in life, that too many things will happen or it will go wrong, any of this. No. Our relationship is that, yeah, we, we, we have times where we're annoyed or, or like, you know. Trigger the fuck yeah, out of each it's other. It's going to happen. <laughs> but we know the long term yeah. of we get over what we're very doing quickly. and we go, okay, how can we come together? Mm. Again, like, like the whole, I want to do lots of things, you would rather not. How can, we, how can we do that? And if it means there's some sort of like, like this weekend, G doesn't come to things, that's fine. Like there's, yeah. no, there's never any pressure on us. No. I think that we have that relationship where it's like, it's, it's fun. Going yeah, back to yeah, what yeah. we talked about before, it has there's to fun. Be fun. There's, if there's resistance, we talk about it straight away and yeah. we, we get through that. And, um, yeah, thank you for all your, your magical wisdom oh, over the years and, and everything me. and, and, and the you. book. And I'm so proud oh of you, God, Al. Click, this is like click, 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 click. click. <laughs> That's our headphones <laughs> crushing together. But it's been, it's been a ride and I'm so grateful to have you uh, along as am for I. the journey. As am I. Honestly, I couldn't have imagined <laughs> it with anyone else, really, truly, because, you know, I'm a weirdo and <laughs> you have fully, completely accepted me as I am. Never asked me to be any different. Um, even when I throw things that you don't necessarily understand, you totally empathize with me and I'm incredibly grateful for that. And I know that everything we're creating together is so magical and I'm really grateful. I am. Um, love you so much. Thank you for having me on your podcast again. You're um, welcome. May I forever be a guest on your yeah. podcast. <laughs> and as long as we don't know, uh, <laughs> we don't. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what? Just gonna like, say something as long as we don't kill each other, but um, we in the process. Never. But I, I thought about that, and I'm like, we won't. We're thought just. We've just other. got no. We we just we just. I don't know. We just get along. Yeah. Like, do you know why? It's because we have a brother sister dynamic. Like, we are actually like siblings. It's like my sister. I could, you know, punch her. Like I wouldn't actually, but I could want to punch her. And still, five minutes later, we're going shopping together. It's. I feel like Carlo and I just have that relationship. We get over things you. very quickly. I never want to punch you, I was gonna but say, sometimes I'm just sometimes like this guy triggers like me. It's, it's <laughs> but no, but um, no, I get over it very quickly. And the thing is, you know why? Because there's love here. Like yeah. I actually love this person. I care about this person. He is like my family. Not like my family. He is my family. And I treat him as such and he treats me as such. Like I'm very safe in this connection, um, in this, you know, business, in this partnership. And because of that, we thrive. We thrive together. And we want you all a part of that too. We want you part of our family. Thank you for being here. If you have stuck through and listened to this whole thing, we love you, first of all. Thank you so for being part love. of the community. Um, and naturally, as I believe everything is divine you would have received the wisdom that you needed today whatever stuck did and whatever didn't didn't and that's okay if nothing more let it just have been a beautiful hour connecting with two randoms on the internet and that's fine <laughs> 
That's fine. <laughs> as you do. As you do. But if anything has triggered, inspired you or connect, stood out to yeah. you, connect with us. Everything will be linked below. Uh, what's your Instagram? At? At G-L-M-G-E-E. Don't ask questions as to why. Just that's what it is. That's, right? It is But that's what where you can is. find me. That's the platform that I'm most active on. And that's the platform that has all the links to all the things. So... And also, thank you so much to the Coffee Club at Water Gardens for hosting us today. Water Gardens um, in Taylor's Lakes, <laughs> if you're ever on Go the West Side. check it out. <laughs> These guys are legends. Let us record here uh, in front of everyone. We've had a bit of troubles with the sun, but that's okay. You, you, you don't, it doesn't worry you guys if you're listening, wherever you're listening. But reach out, connect. Thank you so much for being here with us. And um, we look forward to connecting with you. G, you're incredible. You know how much you I are. love you. Mirror, so grateful mirror. for you. Mirror, mirror. And... Mirror, mirror. What's your, your famous catchphrase? And so it is. And so it is. And so it, and is. So it is. See you next time, guys. Bye. Peace. Thank you so much for tuning in to this episode. That was an epic conversation, and I'm so grateful I got to share that with all of you. If you love this episode, make sure you do screenshot and share it on your social media. You never know who you could touch by sharing this information out there to the world i would love if you could go to whatever platform you're listening on and leave a rating and review and until next time take care and be nice